Hi, my name is Mary and I am here today to embark on a new journey of being a little bit more open, a little bit more vulnerable during this quarantine time. Um, and hopefully this is an encouragement to everyone on their Easter Sunday. And so today I'd like to share how Jesus changed my life. So let's begin. Um, like I said, my name is Mary. Some people call me by my Korean name, Han. Um, and I am 23 years old. I am currently working full time and am just going through the motions as everyone else is um, in this season. And I just wanted to hopefully encourage people um, in these moments by sharing the story of how Jesus transformed my life and as a preface I would just like to say that I was born and raised in the church I have been going to the same church my entire life all 23 years and I am from a Korean background so I am a second generation Korean going to a Korean church and I've been serving at my church faithfully so if this kind of all adds up there's like a stereotype to what kind of person I am um, and many of you who might be watching this might be like oh, I know you girl, like that's my life, that's my life of faith uh, I was never in some kind of crazy situation or I didn't have like a rebellious phase of my life um, and so my testimony today uh, will not be in such a way where I don't know I was in some accident and I was miraculously healed or um, I was in the jungles of this country like there's nothing like that um, it's just more of how Jesus changed me from the inside out and I hope that for those of you who have been always kind of sad that your testimony isn't so dynamic I promise you um, the personal testimony that you have with Jesus is beautiful whatever it is and so that's mine and um, basically I was born and raised in the church I know all the stories in the Bible memorized a bunch of verses from my Awana program and had many great examples of Christian leaders in my church as well to look up to um, but just because you have a lot of head knowledge of biblical truth um, it doesn't mean that truth speaks to you in your heart and for me I grew up knowing a lot about Jesus but then uh, I did not let Jesus have the hold over my life and so recently I did this thing called the Passion Experience uh, side note but basically it like goes through Passion Week with you from the beginning of Jesus's ministry and even prior to that to the resurrection and one of the questions in that activity said uh, I'm paraphrasing but basically it says do you allow Jesus to have the final word and that made me think a lot because my testimony basically is that I never let Jesus have the final word in my life. Um, not to go too much in detail because I don't want this to be too long, but something that I've been struggling with for my whole life is um, anxiety and just fear of everything but God. Uh, I would fear the world, I would fear comfort, I would fear practicalities. Uh, fear of my financial status and uh, my academic status, fear of people. I feared man so much that I allowed fear to drive basically every decision that I've ever made or all the decisions I didn't make. And yes, I would kind of tune into Bible verses and think, oh, well, the Bible says this and I would take it into account. But the final decision I made would always be out of my own fear and anxiety. And um, it was not too serious when I was younger, but as I got older, it took a huge reign over my life. And so even though I was baptized um, April 8th, 2012, in those eight years um, since, and just continuously asked God, Lord, teach me to trust you more. God, would you break down my walls that I built up on my own and would I not fear this world, but may I only fear you. And let me tell you, it has been such a process. And honestly, I think even till this day, there are moments where I find myself fearing man. 
There are moments when I feel like Pilate who knew Jesus was innocent and yet casted him to be dead uh, basically because of fear of man. Even though deep down he knew Jesus was innocent, I still see those moments in my life where I am basically Pilate washing my hands to say that I'm innocent when I'm not. And I think it was a process of having to be humble before the Lord and say, God, I do believe that you died for me. I believe that you loved someone um, as anxious as I am. And I believe that you died for a girl like me who is so deep in sin. Um, but the beauty of this faith and this testimony is that as much as I feared man, God covered me with his love and said, there's nothing to fear. Um, for even if you walk through the valley or the shadow of death, you will fear no evil for my rod and my staff will comfort you. And this is Psalms 23 and this is just a passage that has comforted me so much because as a woman who lives with so much worry um, God said to me do not worry and as someone who lived in so much fear of everything around me and I tried to predestine my life God said don't worry about that too I got it covered I am your shepherd simply follow me because all those hardships that are to come I have already gone before you and so it has been a process and my testimony is continuously unraveling in this day and there are still moments where I get scared. Um, I briefly I'll share, I went to India Mission a few times and um, in those moments too where people are really persecuted for their faith, um, there are moments where I was in the mission field and I get scared like, Jesus, what if I die <laughs> here? Like, I don't know if I'm ready to die. I'm not married yet. I didn't have kids. But then I'm reminded every moment I go that everything that happens on this earth is worth it if I did it for the kingdom. And that confidence is something I never had before, but it's because Jesus showed me his love first that now I have nothing to fear because his rod and staff will protect me and he is my shepherd and whatever happens, he's gonna lead me. So I hope this story encourages you today. Uh, I hope that you press forward in your faith and there will be moments and trials where it's gonna be scary and persecution and there will be hurt and pain, but I promise you as your sister, that if God can heal a heart like mine and love me so deeply daily, I know he can do that. For you as well so thank you for listening and i hope you have a great easter bye